Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's another episode of Pelvic Gaming with your host, Aleta Pelvic. And today's game that I'm going to pick on is none other than Bravely Second End Layer, which came out for the Nintendo 3DS April 15th, 2016, which is a direct sequel to Bravely Default. I played and beat Bravely Default. Overall, I loved it, minus that one part, the ending. If you played Bravely Default, y'all know what I'm talking about. If you haven't played Bravely Default, prepare to hate yourself. But today, let's talk Bravely Second. Bravely Second starts off with you fighting the Kaiser and failing, left only to watch him kidnap Agnes Oblige. The new protagonist, Eugenie Olja, must muster up the strength and courage to lead the Crystal Guard and friends to fight the evil Kaiser. The entire game you're chasing after the Skyhold, which is imprisoning Her Holiness. You're joined by both new and old characters of Bravely Default. Once again, you're blessed with an amusing cast of characters ranging from the hot-headed Idia to the scaredy cat Yu. Although personally, they don't compare to the original cast of Tiz, Anyez, Idia, and my darling Ringabelle. Oftentimes while you're traveling, you get fun little party chats or opportunities to rest in a tent to see a cheesy interaction between the party. I couldn't help myself. Just when I was thinking of you, here he is, and... <sighs> thinking of you? W what do you mean, thinking? Hegeus was bullying me, like he always does. And before I knew it, my mind was drifting to happier days with you. Happier days with you? Man alive, Magnolia, calm down! While interactions were adorable or comical, they were frequent and can come off annoying or lighten up the dilemma the characters found themselves in, leaving the player with little to no sense of drama. Other times there were clever ways to remind the player of the events of Bravely Default, which I desperately needed. To this game's defense, it doesn't take itself seriously, as it breaks the wall multiple times, it has silly writing, whimsical events. Actually, it's like it's parodying laborist JRPGs such as Final Fantasy. In order to semi-enjoy this game, understand it wasn't meant to be intricate or emotional, and when it does try to tug on the heartstrings, specifically in regards to Eugenie Olja, it fell flat. As you're chasing after the Skyhold, you visit many familiar places and see plenty of familiar faces, and of course, a few new ones. But if I'm being honest, the story was cliche beyond all reason, and it felt like I was playing Bravely Default with a few new job classes, and with better pacing, especially during the game's later hours. Much better pacing. What really makes the Bravely series amazing is its refreshing take on a traditional turn-based battle system. In fact, Bravely Default is the game that got me back into turn-based battle systems. Brave means using an action, and you can use up to four. However, be careful as it may leave you in the red, and you won't be able to perform an action until you're out of the negatives, leaving you completely open. Default means defend and gaining a brave point. There are several different jobs which greatly enhance the fun of Bravely Second. Jobs, or classes, are obtained by defeating someone of that job, and offer a range of passive and offensive abilities. As you level up jobs, you unlock stronger abilities, and it goes a layer deeper. After leveling up jobs, you can mix and match abilities, enabling the characters to play multiple roles. Perhaps you're a thief who can cast black magic, or a white mage who can Damn. That is hands down the best part of this game, intertwining job classes to take down enemies with unique fighting patterns. And if things get a little rough, use Bravely Second, a mechanic to stop time and hammer into your opponent. A common complaint about this game is how grindy it is, and as a lover of JRPGs, I've learned to love and accept the grind. But I need to give props to Bravely Second for making a tedious grind as pleasant as possible. You can alter the encounter rates, the difficulty, whether you get money, experience, or job experience, and the game speed. And one of the best new features is chaining battles. If you beat the enemy in one turn, you're offered another round with a bonus experience multiplier. Frankly, I don't understand why all turn-based games don't offer this, as it takes the tedious edge off grinding. I could easily catch up on shows while simultaneously strengthening my party, which was great! Street Pass also serves a little fun function. Just like in Bravely Default, Bravely Second has a rebuild the town kind of side quest. Each person you pass joins the town, and you can designate them to build a shop. The more people designated to a shop, the faster it's built. If you have no friends, fret not, as the game rewards you every 24 hours with 5 people to join your town if you update your data. There are also galactic threats called balls. <laughs> balls, which are rough enemies who will try to invade the town. Before you engage, you have ships that can weaken the enemy to a fightable level. Highly recommend, because they, they are, they are tough balls. Another fun minigame is Chomper. I wasn't a fan at first, but if you're in the middle of something brief, leave your 3DS open during the Chomper game and watch the crew make cute little fun toys. Fill up the basket, sell them for a better price to make rarer Chomper toys, to buy better materials, and so on. 
The graphics and art. The Bravely games easily distinguish themselves from other JRPGs through their looks alone. 3D characters in a 2D background. Chibi-esque characters with simplistic faces and no noses. I am personally a fan of the character designs as much as I was the first one, but what really impresses me is the detail of the towns and the dungeons. I really did enjoy the effect of meshing 2D and 3D, simplistic and detail all into one beautiful world. Lastly, the music was as good as any standard JRPGs would be. I feel like I'm picky when it comes to music, especially when there are games like Nier Automata and Final Fantasy IX that have such striking music. So I'm gonna fast forward here to the best track in the game, which is heard exclusively when you're busting balls. No, really, this is the ball battle theme music. I love the chanting and how action-packed it is. Plus, you're fighting some hideous monstrous creature, and yet you hear a children's choir in the background. The music is just as deranged as the balls are. Welp, enjoy! second and layer gets a 7 out of 10. What kept this game afloat was its gameplay. While the characters were likable, they didn't leave any sort of lasting impression and neither did the narrative. The offbeat writing being cheesy yet charming, usually? The Bravely series is something I would want my children to play when I'm introducing them to JRPGs. It's easy to follow and it modernizes traditional JRPG gameplay. While Bravely Second was a cute little adventure, I have a hard time enthusiastically recommending this to you guys, as it feels more like a ginormous expansion to Bravely Default, rather than a true sequel. On a positive note, the Bravely series has one of my favorite battle systems ever, which leads me to my question, what are some of your favorite battle systems in gaming? Some of mine are obviously the Bravely series, Bayonetta, and Tales of. Tales of Grace's F specifically. Well, let me know in the comment section is yo's. So, Mother's Day is right around the corner, day before my birthday, and I invited my mom on the channel. So if you have any embarrassing questions for Mama Pelvic about me or gaming, or Dungeons and Dragons, she's a huge Dungeons and Dragons nerd. Drop your questions in the comments section below. If there's enough questions, I'll be making a video.